Okay, we're on air. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting for May 9th, <coughs> 2018. Call this meeting to order. Everybody, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call. Ms. Torrin? Yes. Here. Mr. Blaze? Here. Mr. Crockett? Here. Mr. Hebert? Here. Ms. Shoup? Here. And Mr. Loizel? Here. Great. Thank you. Approve, motion to approve the minutes from April 11, 2018. Motion is approved uh, as stated. Excuse me. A second? Second. All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. One housekeeping item is we have appeal number 2635 in case anybody's here, seeing no one is. Just want to make sure that everybody knows variance request by Robin McLaughlin, 29 Vesper Street, Assessor's Map U1, Parcel 19 has been tabled for this evening. And let's go into the drafts for the written decisions for appeals on March 14th, 2018. Appeal number 2632, Tim and Jane Gallagher and Barry and Linda Chrisman. Need a motion on that to approve our findings? Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Appeal number 2622, Anthony Demito. Motion for approval of our findings. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Appeal number 2633, Jeremy and Karen Grondon. Motion to approve our findings. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Being that said, has everybody had a chance to review the three appeals that we had and what we have decided for our decisions? Yes. Yes. Tremendous. Okay. Thank you. Sir. <clears throat> All right. First matter on the agenda is six month extension request by Charming Village Chapel LLC for appeal 2617, special exception <coughs> on 2618, a practical difficulty variance for 450 County, Ro County Road, approved on December 13th, 2007. It's 2017, excuse me. Does anybody have any questions on this? I know, I believe everybody was here, but maybe our newest member. Does anybody have anything further on it or? Just circumstances behind the extension. Do we know the circumstances behind it? In the letter. Okay. Uh, Nothing beyond that? I don't have a copy of the letter okay. myself. So yeah, it's just, it's just the letter? Yeah. yeah, they just need time to do a traffic study and they yeah. want to do it during busy season. Rather than during the winter when no one's there. Okay. Nothing beyond what's written. If, yeah, okay. as long as there's nothing Thank beyond you. what's written, then we should be good. Um, I think the traffic study is a good idea down there. <laughs> Absolutely. Definitely warranted. Agreed, especially how close to the road is to that intersection. Certainly yeah. would help. It's huge. Does anybody want to make a motion to approve that or further discussion? Motion to approve the extension. <clears throat> of appeal number, I don't see it, sorry. Uh, uh, 450 County 18. Road for a six month extension. Second. All Second. Set. All those in favor? Unanimous.
We just need to reaffirm what we found on this. Yeah. Oh, I just need to. Yeah, I just need to sign up. It's just the extension. Okay. All right, appeal number 2634, a special exception request by Kenneth Beasley, 324 Gordon Road, assessor's map R34, parcel 4C. Please take the podium, sir. If you have anything with you for drawings or anything, you can certainly use the easel right there. Yeah, as well. yeah it's the same thing you've got. The same thing you've got on the screen. You can probably see that better. Okay. Just state your name and address and go into what you're looking to do. We, we are reaffirming this from our last meeting. So, My name is Ken Beasley. Um, I'm the owner of property at 324 Gorham Road in Scarborough. I've been a general contractor for 30, 40 years, and I'm moving into a niche and selling sunrooms. And what I want to do is take a small portion of my property and be able to put a showroom in my displays on, on my property. Okay. And we have further information on our packets and pictures and things that you've given us from the last time we met? Correct. Would you like to just go over any information as to <coughs> what you may have for new that you're doing or anything you may have changed? Or um, I, I did change. Um, I think originally I taught three structures and um, I downsized that to just two, two dis um, portable displays. Okay. When we met last, I thought there was discussion about one of the solar units being there and then another unit, if I remember correctly, where you were going to have your office. Is that incorrect? Or? <coughs> Uh, several years ago, I got a permit and I put a greenhouse up, and that was 16 by 24. And in that permit, I was going to put a structure in front of that greenhouse, which was going to be the potting room, et cetera, et cetera. And I haven't built that structure. So if you look at the print, and you'll see where it says greenhouse um, slash storage, we only use the greenhouse for a couple months of, of, the, of the year, and outside of that, it's just basically storage. So I want to take and convert that slab in front of the greenhouse into my showroom, where I could, you know, meet with customers, et cetera, et cetera. Can you do it on that one? I can't do it on that one because it doesn't show up. Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess I can turn around. Still got to be check on that. Can I ask a question? Go ahead, Jeff. Question? I have a question. Um, on photograph. C3, and thanks for sending, submitting the photographs. I really appreciate it. It gives you a clear idea of what's going on. On photograph C3, yep. um, can you point out which one is the uh, greenhouse that you have right now? Is it the building in the back behind the, the behind the uh, items covered with the blue tarp, sort of a, a gray building with a white roof? Uh, let me get there. Yep. <coughs> Screen can if that helps. Oh, you do? Okay, is that that's C3. Okay, so the the building you see to the far left is one of the portable displays, and the greenhouse is just behind that blue tarp you see there, and just in front of that, um, just in front of that is where the slab is. It's just, it's just on the other side of those logs that you see there. Are there slabs for both the greenhouse and the? Yeah, the, the, the slab is, is continuous underneath the greenhouse, yes. Okay, what about the solar room that's there? I'm, I'm assuming that's what that is, that's a solar room? The, the, the sun room, uh, yeah. that's portable, that's, that's on uh, six by six skids. <coughs> so the only slab we have is the slab that's underneath the greenhouse? The greenhouse and the, the building I want to construct, yes. Which that's is in front of the greenhouse. Pardon me? In front of the greenhouse. In front of the greenhouse, right. It's actually attached to the greenhouse. Okay, thanks. Okay, so there's two slabs there now. No, it's one slab okay. that originally I put it as one pour because that was going to originally be all used for the greenhouse. Okay. Um, I'm not sure procedurally. I have a couple questions that kind of just spurred from this picture. And again, I'm not sure how relevant it is to the application of you wanting to run a business there. It's in regards to the business that you're currently running there. Because I mean, I look at this picture and it looks like there's a lot of stuff going on already in your yard. 
And um, I mean, one of the qualifications for running a home business is having, um, you know, so many employees. Do you currently have employees with the business that you're running there? I do not. So no employees are coming and going? Correct. Okay. And so then I guess, I'm trying to understand, I guess we went into the logging a little bit when we were here last month, and I'm trying to tr figure out exactly what... I have, a, I have a, a portable sawmill um, as a hobby, and those are some of the logs you see in the picture where all that will be moved behind a privacy fence. A privacy fence. And if you look at the drawing, you can see the, the fence drawing behind the display area. So the area that I was dedicating to the sunrooms is roughly 90 by 130, I believe. Yeah, 90 by 130. So in that space will be none of the hobby stuff, none of the sawmill, none of, the, none of that stuff. So as you pull in from the road, the only things that should be on display either from Gorham Road or as you're pulling in should be items related to just uh, sun space. the sun space. Okay, so all the logs and the debris that's around the yard right now, that's going to be completely removed or concealed behind? Correct. Okay. And can you point out, uh, sorry again real quick, the, f the fence on your drawing um, that you're proposing? Um, if, you, if you look behind... Um, the, the line, the measurement line at 130, you'll see uh, eight foot increments for the, round, for the round post, the square post. Uh, to, to the left of that, okay. okay. Right, correct, behind the sun space area. Okay. And what style of fence are you planning on using there? Uh, it's probably going to be a wooden fence. Um, it will be a privacy and not a semi private. Okay, so there won't be uh, gaps or anything for people to view through or anything correct. like that. I'm sorry. So that's just a lot of wood. So what do you do with, do you just have a collection or do you sell stuff? I guess I'm not sure what exactly, what uh, the ins, is going ins, on Well, there. a lot of it started out the inside of my shop. Um, it's just fiberglass insulation. And a lot of the stuff I've been cutting, I'm going to use to sheathe the inside of my shop. Okay. Um, some of the stuff, you know, I use to build this building that I want to put in front of the greenhouse. Yeah. And some of the stuff I give to my brother who uh, sells it at um, flea markets. Yeah, uh, again, I mean, I'm just, you know, I think one of the things you're saying is, oh, I'm surrounded by businesses, but I mean, the businesses you're surrounded by do not look like this. And I mean, you know, I'd, Sunroom sounds like a great idea, but if it's conforming to the businesses next to it, and it looks like There are like no businesses that. next to it. Oh, I thought there were two businesses next no, to I, it. No, I, I take that back. There's a veterinary hospital on my left, right. and then the golf course is two house lots up from me. I think there's a doggy daycare or something right down there too. Isn't oh, that's it? way further down the street. Further down, okay. All right, let's let's go into the standards for special exceptions, and we can address those again. We'll go down through the questions. You can give us your responses. Yep. We can have discussion on them, and then the board can have questions, and then we can have a vote on that, and we'll go into the home home based occupation after that. Okay. Okay. The proposed use will not create unsanitary, unhealthy conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air, or water, or other aspects of its design or operation. There'd be no, um, no water facilities on site. Okay. B, the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when, when added to the existing or foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Um, I have ample parking and turnaround space on my lot and I don't expect a lot of traffic. Okay. The proposed use will not create public safety problems which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree I mean, it's full fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. Um, it's more of an office space. There's no, no uh, fabrication or anything going on. Okay. The proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on the water supplies. Then again, we're not doing anything on site except just showing what we have for product. Okay. The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures and density of development? Um, <clears throat> it would just be the, the displays that are there now. Uh, we're not looking to add anything else. Okay. If located in a shoreland zone, are you located in a shoreland zone? No. So we really don't need to address that. Uh, the applicant has sufficient right title or interest in the site or proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. My wife and I bought the property in uh, uh, 99, 
Okay, thank you. The applicant has a technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection 5 of this section. There again, I've been doing remodeling for 40 years, so my wife's a pharmacy, so that's not an issue. Okay, so any special conditions we would put on it, you have the financial means to take care yep. of it. Okay. Uh, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect, respect to generation of noise and hours of operation. Um, it's, you know, daylight hours and I don't expect a lot of traffic. <coughs> what times are you thinking you're going to be open? 8 o'clock to 5 o'clock. Okay. Thank you for going over those. So, no, I'm about to give anything else. Are there any letters? Or? There was none. I'd like to open it up to the public hearing. Seeing that there's none available or anyone here, I'll close <laughs> <the public> <laughs> open it up to questions on the board for the questions that we just went through. If anybody has any, I would like to get some clarifications on the sketches, uh, the sketch that you pulled together. Uh, there's a dimension 90 degrees to the right side of the property. What's that referencing to? Uh, 90 feet to the right side of the property. Um, <clears throat> that's just showing the area that would be sun space only. So from the edge of my property over, you know, I'm assuming 90 feet by 130 feet, that block of space. So that right-hand side is your property line? Yes. Okay, so you need a 15-foot setback on that side as well, so you won't be within that? Correct. Based on the scale, and it looks like the portable display, if I were to scale it, is at least 20, 30 feet or so from the right side property my line. Dri my driveway at that point where the 90 intersects yep. is uh, 15 feet from the property. My driveway is 20 feet wide. Okay, so it looks like you're, say, roughly 45 feet from the sideline. I think that telephone pole that you <clears> see <throat> in front of the portable display, the 8x14, was at 37 feet. Okay, and it's very deep in the property. Uh, I would say something like 140 or 50 feet from the front front. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's 130 feet to the to approximately to the back side of the uh, okay. portable so, display. So clearly that's within the, the boundaries. I'm just putting it on record because it's not written, it's yeah. to scale. And the same thing with the front portable display. That looks like it's the front edge, say, 60 feet from the front property line. Correct. That DOSH dotted line is the 50-foot setback. Yeah. And again, somewhat centered in that. Uh, 90 foot wide, so it's off the right side by 60, 70 feet. Correct. So I don't see any issues with the placement of any of the buildings on the property. Anybody else have any questions? Uh, I do. Um, and Brian, can we go back to the uh, aerial view map, please? Just for my own clarification. So um, I see the existing greenhouse there now. Um, directly to the left, uh, I think it's lot 322, if I, if I saw your tax map earlier. Is that your property? Um, that's lot 322. 322. No, that, that's not my property. We're, we're, yeah, that is my property. Okay. So, so 324 is my property where you see the, uh, the uh, gravel driveway. Mm -hmm. The paved driveway is my neighbor. Okay. And the gravel driveway goes all the way, all the way up into the woods, correct? My driveway goes all the way up to my house. And that's your house there on the that's back? That's my house in the back, yes. Okay. Um, and your proposed fence to place all of the wood, the portable sawmill, and everything else, if we're looking at this map here, it would, go, it would go down from the back edge of my shop. Bottom here, yeah. Yeah, the, the big building. From there, all the way down to the pine trees by the road, mm -hmm. and then back across the pine trees, and then back up behind Sun Space. Okay. Approximate height of the fence? Uh, I haven't, haven't actually determined that, but it's okay. going to be six foot anyhow. Okay. Okay. What are you um, planning on putting back in there? Uh, the, sawmill, the sawmill will go back in there. Um, a lot of the stuff that's there now is going to go away. You know, being I'm downsized, I, I won't need this, you know, a lot of the staging and that type of stuff. There's an old trailer in there that's going to go away. My excavator wants a trailer, so I'm going to do a little house trading. He's going to do a little work for me. And if he, gets a trailer, that type of thing. So you're going to clean up the area where you're going to have your business? I'm going to clean up the area where Sunspace is, plus clean up the area that um, where my hobby takes place. Get it more organized and more appropriate. Right now it's a disaster. I, I have a question. Brian, can you go one more up, please? 
right there. Bring it up a little bit more. If you can, bring, sorry, so we can see the gravel and stuff down below. I guess come down. There we go. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, with this picture, it looks like there's some stuff in there right now. I mean, when you're removing this, are you going to create any, like, of other stuff flowing into your driveway or flowing out of your driveway from the things that are up above that are being removed? It looks like you've kind of got, you've got gravel down there, and I don't know, it looked like there was some gray or white stuff that was in the front of the driveway as well. No, there's, um, going up the driveway, you have a, a paved apron uh, that it turns to gravel. Um, a lot of that stuff you see there now has been cleaned up already. Um, then there's a pile of rocks right there that you see right in the middle of the screen. That's a pile of rocks. Okay. And then the gravel parking is just on the other side of that pile of rocks. Okay. It just looks like with the driveway, it looks like there's some gas where things are running down kind of like through water. And I just that, well, it was raining that day when I took the picture. Right, and that that's, was my question when you're going to the, getting all that other stuff removed back there. It's been sitting there for a while. Is anything else going to come running down? No, there's, there's, nothing, there's nothing there that would be... Uh, uh, toxic to the environment anyhow. It's just, uh, you know, basically gravel and, and the, the logs are the biggest thing there. Okay. And the other thing you said, and when we looked at 322 to 324 for the lots, we were going to the compatible in the neighborhood. You had mentioned that there's really not a business there, so, I mean, you got one neighbor there and you got trees on the other side. I'm not sure how far down we go for the neighbor. How, how far down is the veterinary hospital from you? Uh, one more? house lot over. Two, what? Two lots. Okay. One lot. There, there, there's a lot right next to these Bailey's, okay. and then it's a veterinary hospital. Is that residential? Bailey's, yes. Okay. So you got two residents on either side of you, and probably residents directly in front of you, right? Uh, no. There's no. There's, there's there's a resident directly across from me at an angle, uh, on the corner of New Road, and that's it. Yeah. And there is a gentleman. I think one of those houses. Maybe I get down a little bit further that does honey or something like that to bees. I think. That's not the first white farm you see there, it's that one. Okay, so he does have a business there in his home. Any other questions from the board? I guess my, my only concern and, um, and Ken, and with all respect, it's just, it's, it's kind of a mess there right now and just for as far as uh, when we're going through like part E, the visual impact for compatibility with the rest of the neighborhood. Um, I'm personally probably gonna recommend that you know, everything be sort of cleaned up, the fence is erected and everything before the, uh, the displays will go in, um, just for the sake of the neighbor who's immediately next door to you there. Uh, and also just from the, the site from the road. Uh, that's just my only concern that I have. The neighbor immediately uh, next to me comes over and helps me with the song though. <laughs> so he's contributing to the mess. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'll be the first one to tell you that it's a, it's a disaster at the moment, and, and uh, you know, 90% of the time, every time after the snow melts away, there's always a mess to clean up. But it's, it's right now, it's totally unacceptable to, to have uh, um, potential clients come and look at the mess. It doesn't project a good image for my company to do that. So, you know, even a dummy would not want to have all that stuff hanging around. Sure, sure. Um, how long approximately has it been in that current state? Um, well, it was, it was cleaner before it snowed out, so if I had to throw a dot, I'd say maybe a year. Okay. Any other questions? We're we going to talk about the home occupation. We will. We're going to get into that after the special exceptions. You mean we're going to vote on this before the home occupation? I was going to vote on the special exceptions portion and then go to the home occupation. And the special the exception is what? Just allowing the business in that area? Yeah, and then we have to go to the home occupation. To we can certainly vote on them both at the same time if you want to. We just need to go through the home occupation questions now. I think you can review them both, and then we vote for both that after. Sure. Is that fair? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. And then if any concerns connect the two sides, then we'll vote. <coughs> Home occupation section 9, page, page 37 to 41, put it that way. <laughs> 9B. B is in B is in 5. All right, we're going to go through the 
questions for Home Office Nation for you as well. And we'll just okay. need you to answer yeah. those as well. And then we'll probably have some questions about the home occupation, and then we'll be voting on the two. Yep. The occupation or profession shall be carried out on wholly within the principal building or within a building accessory thereto. Correct. The home occupation shall be clearly incidental and secondary to the use of the dwelling unit for residential purposes. Correct. No more than one person who is not a resident of the dwelling unit shall be employed in the home occupation. There again, correct. Exterior signage shall be permitted in accordance with the home occupation sign provi provisions under section 12, sign re regulation subsection E. You can have a sign if you yep. want one. It has to be placed within a certain amount of feet from the home. I don't know how that works if his home is way off in the woods, so. <laughs> no, it's just a step back from the, from the road. Okay. There shall be no exterior display, no exterior storage of materials, and no other exterior indication of the home occupation or vari variation from the residential character of the principal, bu principal building, except as expressly permitted by the district regulations of this ordinance. The pro prohibition shall not apply to the storage of lobster traps. I don't, that might be the one thing that you don't have there. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you okay with that? Um. I have Wait. two. Dis I have two displays. I mean, well, we're gonna. We're, I think we're gonna get into materials and other things when we go through this question. So, to be from what we're seeing, that's probably something we're gonna have some questions on. Okay. No nuisance shall be generated, including but not necessarily limited to, to offensive noise, vibration, smoke, dust, odors, heat, or glare. You said the shop is the wood shop is gonna be in the back, and that generally doesn't produce any of these things. Correct. The traffic generated by such home occupation shall not increase the volume of traffic so as to create a traffic hazard or disturb the residential character of the immediate neighborhood. Correct. In addition to the off-street parking provided to meet the normal requirement of the dwelling, adequate off-street parking shall be provided for the vehicles of each employee and the vehicles of the maximum number of users or customers the home occupation may attract during peak operating hours. How many people do you think you're going to be having? During one, your operating one, hours. One couple at a time. And you have sufficient parking there once everything's cleaned up for them to come in, turn around without backing into anything and yes. get onto that road. Home occupation may utilize not more than 20% of the dwelling unit floor area, provided that for the purpose of this calculation, unfinished basement and attic spaces are not included. Correct. And I, I think we might have a question on that as well, because I remember when we were looking at the two sections on that one slab, it may have been close to that number for the 20%, but we'll definitely have some questions on that for you. Unfinished attic and basement and space within the accessory building totaling not more than 1,000 square feet of the floor area. So that's what we're looking at for the square, square footage that you'll be able to right. be within. Right, and we're under the 1,000. I'll, I'll have a question for that probably when we get a little bit further in it. Home occupations may include retail shops subject to the following limitations. The total area devoted to the retail sales is limited to 400 square feet and must be fully enclosed within the building. Yeah, that's um, <coughs> in front of the greenhouse, which is 300 and 252 <coughs> square feet. Okay. The total area devoted to retail sales is limited to 400 square feet. Uh, the sale of the product is limited to products or articles produced, assembled, or processed on the premises, and seafood caught or harvested off the premises by the persons who reside in the dwelling unit or by one employee permitted under paragraph 3. So uh, that's the sale of products is limited to products or articles produced, assembled, or processed on the premises. None of that is. Everything is done at the customer's house. Because that's... You're not a fisherman or a lobsterman. We've already gone, already gone over that. Motor vehicle repairs, you're probably not going to have any of those there either. No. Nope. So those are the questions for the home occupation. Does anybody at the board have any questions for the applicant on these? Just to reiterate one thing uh, under 10B, so the, the sale of the sunrooms, of the sun houses, they're going to be done, constructed at the... Um, each customer's home or location where they want to have it built and Correct. material brought in will be brought directly to what's called the job site and won't be stored. Material, material comes to my property and then I transport it from my property with scheduling to their property. Okay. Where is it stored on your property? 
uh, in the um, um, in the uh, the greenhouse slash storage. So if you're using the greenhouse as storage, does that now become part of the accessory unit that he's using? That I think that's what we ran into it last time. It okay. does, and it probably puts it. But over. it's still under the thousand square feet. I think we looked at it last time. We were over that. Well, I, in the staff comments, Mr. Chairman, I tallied that up. The total area of the fixed buildings is 756 square feet. You got 384 and 252, and then you've got a covered deck that's 10 by 12. I'm sorry. Is that including the portable displays? Yes. That's not, they're not fixed buildings. Those are portable. I think that's where we had gotten into it last time. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think if you even add up the square footage on the portable displays, it's still under a thousand. Um, no, I think it comes over a yeah. thousand. It's like eleven fifty-six. I got them. I think that the portable displays is a, is a separate subject unto itself. Yes. <laughs> what the regulations say about a showroom? The square feet under four hundred. Mm. Well, you got a lot more than four hundred square feet. You got two portable displays plus your showroom. Plus you got. 600 square feet. Well, the showroom would be the 256 square feet. Yeah. What about the displays? They're show, showroom items too. Well, they're they're displays. They're not showrooms. <laughs> so, what's the purpose of the displays then? So that the customer can actually see what the product is to be put on their house. Right. But they so that's an extension of the showroom, though, in a sense, of if you look at it that way. I think that's where we're all thinking. What are you going to show them in the showroom? The, the different products. I, oh, in, in the showroom itself is yeah. where we would sit and, and, and uh, um, go over the details. Um, I have railings. Oh, so I the have, showroom is your office? Um, no, it's more a place to meet with my customers, to sit down and meet with the customers. And you'd have more like options to pick from correct. and things like that, correct? Correct. Mr. Longstaff, I guess, my, I guess my question on this is may, maybe you can clarify. Maybe we don't have a good answer for this. Um, totally already retail sales. How do those how do those play into this for the displays? Are they, is that considered an area of retail sales because he's meeting with people there and he's showing them the? I don't have a good answer for that. Okay. Can you read the fifth question? On our home occupation, one more time, please. Sure. Fifth question, there's, there shall be no exterior display, no exterior storage of materials, and no other exterior indication of the home occupation or variation from the residential character or the principal building, except as expressly permitted by the district regulations of this ordinance. This prohibition shall not apply to storage of lobster traps. I think that's where we're getting into 5 and 10. A, you can't have it both ways. Have, have we reviewed the district regulation? Have we? That's my question. It's saying based on the verbiage of the district mm -hmm. regulation. And I don't know what that is. I don't either. Well, the district is the uh, uh, rural farm district. Okay. And so okay. if there are any restrictions in the rural farm district, in other words, if it's excuse me, if it's not if it's not expressly permitted, then it's deemed to be prohibited. The way the ordinance reads, mm -hmm. there are certain districts that do allow outdoor displays and outdoor storage, and there are some that don't. Obviously, for most residential properties, we don't get into you know if people store a, a lawnmower outside or a, you know something that's purely accessory to the structure. We don't. We don't quibble over those kinds of things. Right. Um, Mr. Lois, I think it, it, with, with an accessory use like this, it's... The, it's reason, I'm, the reason I'm asking, because right now, if you count the displays as uh, part of the square footage, he's over by 36 feet. My calculation puts him at 1036 with all the buildings. So I'm wondering what's allowed and what's not allowed under the RF, because if it doesn't mention it, then it's up to our judgment. If it mentions it, then it could take it off or put it on the plate. It's section 14, page one of three. What, what number? I think that's what you're looking for, section XIV. 
A for the RF. Yeah. For the rural farming district, permitted uses. I mean, I can go over them. Uh, commercial agriculture is subject to the performance standards of Section IX. Commercial animal husbandry. Okay. No idea what that means. Farm stands, agricultural agricultural products, agricultural processing facilities, bed and breakfast, single family detached dwellings, two family dwellings, single multifamily dwelling, residential recreational facility, nursing homes, family daycare, golf course, municipal buildings, place of worship, day camp, forestry, commercial stables, wetlands, creations, accessory units. Special exceptions of public utilities, cemeteries, extra Extractive industries including gravel pits and quarries, camping and tenting, mobile home parks, home occupations, group day care, uh, group day home care, daycare centers, and non commented models, aviation flying fields. And then there's adjunct uses, place of worship, telecommunications, and hospices, and kennels, and veterinary and pet care facilities, and agricultural, which we see in this area because we have some of that that came up with the doggy daycare and the golf course yeah. and the bees. So those are permitted uses. So I guess I'll let you expound on that, Mr. Lysdell, as to what you're thinking. Well, my thought process, if you look at <clears throat> the square footages, it's around putting a business in your residence, right? This is an exterior dwelling to the residence. Mm -hmm. So how you calculate that Square footage is in question to me, since it's not part of that dwelling. How do you say a percentage of the dwelling when it's not part of that dwelling? So do you look at the slab that makes up the greenhouse and the uh, front showroom as a secondary structure? And that is now basing your square footage on how big the showroom can be, and then you don't allow the display because it's going to clearly mm -hmm. put it over the number? Or do you look at the dwelling on the property, even though it's not in it, and use that as part of the calculation, which doesn't make sense to me. So I'm just trying to figure out what's the basis for this and you know, try, trying to straight face test it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I understand completely. So the staff's going through his calculator here. Do you want to answer any question on that? <coughs> Um, I was just trying to consider whether or not the, because we've established that the, the greenhouse storage, the showroom, and the covered deck, which, by the way, when you cover a deck, it's no longer a deck. <laughs> it's, a, it's a porch. <laughs> um, uh, we've established that those tallied up are under 1,000 square feet. So what I was curious about was whether or not whether or not the portable displays could actually somehow exist inside the space that is the greenhouse storage. Uh, instead of having a greenhouse there, if that was a stick-built structure, per se, with some doors, wide doors on it, if those could come inside so it was all on the 1,000-square-foot footprint, then you still, you still got to square with the 400-square-feet of retail space, but I'm not sure that... I'm not sure that I would necessarily consider the displays as retail space um, the same way that a mom and pop store or somebody displaying baskets that they wove or something. I don't know. And, and, and I agree with that. that if, if someone's selling sheds mm -hmm. and he's got two sitting on the property as displays, that's not part of his showroom or that is items that they're trying to sell and show an example of. And then you've got a book inside that shows, here's the 40 different designs I've got. i got a couple out there so you can see standard construction. You can see the details in person, right? So I look at the displays as a separate item, but if you're going to store equipment in the greenhouse, which it sounds like you said that on record, that counts as square footage. The covered deck and showroom add up to 756 altogether, if my calculations are correct. That's under the 1,000, but... It's really around the displays, which is another 280 feet. And seeing as their displays, I don't consider that's an item. That's vegetables on the side of the road sitting in a stand to me. Now, I wouldn't want you to put more than two, to be honest with you, and, and you're not asking for that. So 
um, I am okay saying the displays don't count as square footage. Mm -hmm. But then how does that relate us back to question five of the home occupation, that there shall be no exterior displays? Now you said you have two, two, two displays? Correct. And now you're gonna have those open when you have your business open. I guess last month, didn't you say you bring those to trade shows sometimes? Correct. But you do are gonna be using them as well when you have customers come to your house? Or can they just be put away? Um, no, well, the, the idea is, is they able to show them the space that would be on their house. So to answer your question, yes, the doors would not be locked. So you'd have the displays out? Yes. Okay. Now, right now, you move those displays around on a trailer, correct? Correct. If he leaves them on the trailer, if he, well, you don't have a second trailer. If he were to have a second trailer and had those two trailers parked there, <clears throat> and people could get up on those trailers and look at the display, does that make it any different? And then when he wants to take somebody's fair or whatever to display them, he drives them off the property. I think we addressed this, I don't know how many years ago when we were looking at the other property on Gorham Road down by corners for exterior mm -hmm. items. And that was an administrative appeal, but we addressed those things being outside as exterior and requested that they be put inside. And I think we're seeing very similar to this by the yard. The yards are very similar as to what they look like. Yeah. I guess my concern is in that scenario, if we have you know the two displays on trails that can be taken, um, going back to the variance application, letter E, proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact. Um, the visual impact thing is, is getting me a little bit because it's, you know, just having something stored on a trailer, like coming in and out of the yard doesn't, for me, doesn't meet that requirement. Um, just with, with in comparison to the other homes that are here, um, there aren't any, there aren't any things on trailers being moved in or out. If That's all I have for right now. Any other questions from the board? No other questions. I'll go to the questions for finding a fact and motions. Special exception, we'll go right into letter A. The proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal emissions to the air, water, or other aspects of its design of operation. I would request that if you do make statements, which I encourage you to do, that we put them down as findings of fact so that we can be very clear as to what we're finding for facts on this. Well, I guess I'll stop right down, Mr. Lizell. Yeah, under item one, I don't see any difference between how he operates today. The number of people that are gonna be going to site will not create more mud or runoff or silt. So um, I don't believe there's going to be a change there. I don't think it's going to affect the uh, environment. I agree with Mr. Loisel. I don't think it'll make a difference. I agree as well. Um, in the question saying reason of sewage disposal emissions to air or water, um, there isn't any plans for plumbing to this building. Is that correct? That, that, uh, that satisfies my... Which one are we doing? What's that? Which question are you doing? We're doing questioning special under special exceptions, exceptions standards and special exceptions. Which one? A? A, A. yes. Mm -hmm. um, I, I had a question about this just because of what I saw in the dirt and stuff. Um, you've addressed that. You've given me information that nothing will create anything that's unsafe or unsanitary going forward from what is there. With that being said, I, I trust you that we will get that done and there won't be anything that's going to be a detriment as far as unsafe or unsanitary conditions. So that's correct. That would be the facts I'm basing it on. Is what you're telling me that all those things will not create. Correct. All any, that. Yeah. All that's going further. Yep. Yeah. Mr. Blaze. Yeah. I I agree with that. Now that I know where you guys are. <laughs> <laughs> and I would agree. I would agree as well. Thank you. All in favor of A being met. It's unanimous. Five, yes. B, the proposed use will not create 
unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in the vicinity. Start right down the same spot. Yeah, the applicant stated in his previous view with us that uh, he was expecting one or two people once in a while during the week. So you're probably talking five or six visits at max a week. So it's a very low, low frequency, and uh, I think it fits. Thank you. Yeah, I think you've demonstrated that it won't really be any different than what it is. I agree. It's a low frequency of vehicles coming and going. Again, my question to you is I asked if there's actually a way for people to pull into the site, turn around. You assured me that you will have <coughs> the access to that yeah, so that people that. don't have to back up <coughs> out of the road. That would be a nightmare. Correct. So as long as there's space for them to not hit anything, be able to drive in, drive out, and back back out and actually drive out onto Gorham Road, I'm fine with that. Yeah, Mr. Chair, looking at the... Uh, sketch that was given for this application there's a 44 foot wide area where you have the road next to parking potentially potentially parking spots and he could put eight to ten cars in that side left side of the 44 feet thank you for standing on that well, i don't i don't really have any hang up with that i mean there's so much traffic on 114 i mean four or five cars a week not going to Break the bank on that baby. So I'm all right with that. I agree. All in favor of B me and Met? It's unanimous five. C the proposed use will not create public safety problems, which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree in municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. We'll start right down at the end again. Yeah, I do not see fire or police uh, hazards being caused as a result of this. The Ability to turn around on the property takes away my biggest issue. I agree. Yep, he stated that. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, we're on letter D, is that correct? We're on letter C. 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 I apologize. Um, the, yes, I agree in that there is no need for additional file or fire or police protection in this area outside of what's already being provided. <clears throat> I mean, the proposed use being compatible with the existing uses in the neighborhood, you do have some that are around. You have the veterinary hospital on one side. You have the doggy daycare down the road a little bit. You have the bee operation where they're doing the honey pretty much across from you. So I would base it based on that. I mean, it's already a nightmare for public safety if there's an accident there anyways. I don't think this is going to be any different than what is already there. And you've already got businesses there that would generate the same amount of traffic you're going to generate. Yeah, I agree. I don't think there's any additional impact on any services that we provide. Agreed. All in favor of C, B, and MET? Yeah, it's 5 0. The proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on water supplies. I agree. He, he meets the requirement there. there. He has a gravel driveway. That's not a change. Uh, he's going to be cleaning up his site, which is going to help. <clears throat> so uh, it will only get better from this point forward. So mm -hmm. it's good. It meets. I agree with Mr. Lozell. I agree. Um, it's per my question that I asked earlier, there's not going to be any water supply or plumbing coming to this new, uh, new site. Yeah, I don't see any sedimentation or erosion. Again, I go back to moving the items that are there that would have created that. But if you can assure me that's not going to then I don't see anything further that this would do. I don't see any problem. I, I think the biggest thing is that he's got to clean up his yard. Oh, I agree. That's, uh, Lord knows what's in there. Oh, some I know exactly what's in there. Some of those pictures are a little bit horrifying. But other than that, I don't have any problem. You want to agree with that? Okay, all in favor of DB and Met? Unanimous 5 0. The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity of other structures, and density of development. Right yes, I think it fits within the, uh, the use of the RF zone. Uh, you have re a mix of residential and businesses that's clear from the aerial map that it's, in, uh, it's allowed in this proposed use. Uh, I struggle with this one. I think Mr. Hebert had commented on the visual impact as well. I mean, 
I think Brian has said that you were perfectly allowed to be doing what you're currently doing at your property regarding the logging, but now you know you're coming before us with this mess in your front yard saying, hey, give me permission to do a business where you're wanting to do exterior displays. Um, so I do not think that this has been met. Um, for me, the applicant stated that he is going to clean up um, the debris in front of the yard that's not related to uh, the sun, the proposed sun space display showroom and greenhouse storage. Um, and my only recommendation is that uh, the, um, the variance is allowed contingent upon concealing all of the material and debris unrelated, either cleaned up or concealed, uh, anything unrelated to the sun space displays that's visible from the road. On this one, yeah. <laughs> The bee place that sells the honey, the farm down there, is probably going to generate about the same as far as visual impact as this is. I mean, it's, it's a business. I mean, if you're cleaning up everything and all that stuff's gone, you'll look very similar to what they are. But if it's all there, not even close. Um, I do have a little bit of a visual impact problem with the screen houses for the displays. I mean, I can get into those and the other aspect of this. but. Um, I, I don't quite like, I've been down that road numerous times, and I don't quite <coughs> like the impact that it has had, and it's had this impact for quite a while. So, I mean, if you're going to clean it up, that's great, but I, I, I think it's going to stick out a little bit more. You said, what, is it going to be a six-foot fence that's going to yeah. go down and around, and it's going to come around the front as well? Right, and this, this, uh, I mean... The logs are not neatly piled at the moment. Um, there's an abnormal amount of logs on the property at the moment. Um, you know, all that, all that's going to go away. And I, you know, I've been picking at it already. I mean, if you had saw this property a month ago, I wouldn't be standing here. With what you've told me, and I'm trusting your word on this, that it's all going to be gone. As long as those screen houses are pushed in and the fence is up, are you also going to put the fence up on that side as well by the screen houses so that it's not visually impact from that side of the road as well? Yeah. Okay, so it's going to be pretty much around the property except for the driveway. <coughs> All right, I'm. I'm Fen so Fencing is going to go by your neighbor that's on the right, going down my property line through my neighbor. Yeah. Going across the front. Yeah. And then I was going back up on the back side of the, uh, so the sun space space. Okay, are you going to put a piece of fence on that side of your driveway as well so that the sunrooms are kind of in past? So you're asking me if I'm going to put the, the uh, sun space behind a fence, from the, a fence between the sunrooms and the street? Yes. Uh, at this point, I hadn't planned on doing that. Well, I would probably want that for my decision to be a yes on this. What is it you're requesting? Yeah, just, sure. just at the fence, visual impact, you're going to take the entire visual impact. Up. That would be my suggestion. Are you willing to do that? Say, say that one more time, Mr. Yeah, Chair. I just want a clarification as to what you're asking for. If, if he's going to put the fence up and he's going to go down both sides? If he, he's creating a U-shaped fence, which is to the property side, uh, property line on the left, U-shaped towards the front, and then right. comes up the center of the property. He wasn't going okay, towards so the going, north. Okay, so you're not going on the other side where those are going to be, where I, the displays I, are going to be. Correct. Okay. I would say no on this then. Can you explain that? You think the displays is too much is too much of a visual impact? I do. Okay. I think it has been too much of a visual okay. impact. Can, can I also add a clarification here? Sure. I've heard a lot of heard a lot of the board members complaining about the stored trees that are on the property that has nothing to do with the use of this. He happens to have stored trees in the area where he's doing this. Has nothing to do with this display of what he's doing with these sunrooms. So please be careful. I know you might not like it. And I know it adds to the volume of stuff that's down there. I think you have a very valid stance on saying, let's move the displays to behind a fence so it's less visual impact. Just be careful. I think you're treading in an area where you, this has nothing to do with the use he's proposing. So you might not like it. You might not like the way it looks. I'm not saying he doesn't have the right, but he has a right to live in whatever fashion he wants. Yeah, that's so, why I haven't brought up the yeah, logs at please, all. Please be careful. I brought up the logs last so, time. So I agree yeah. with your statement around yeah. the displays. You might want to extend that fence from horizontal, uh, horizontal excuse me, uh, from left to right. If you did that, you could put the displays behind that, mm -hmm. and it would 
take away from that yep. visual density, and I understand why the chair might be saying that. I'm just doing Thank this you. based on my decision of what you proposed here. Mm -hmm. You're proposing to have those as displays. I think that's too much of a visual impact for the neighborhood. I mean, personally, I just don't think it reflects well on the town or the board if we're going to say, hey, you know, put your sunroof up when your whole front yard is a mess. And unfortunately, you know, me and someone else who also lives out in that neighborhood is impacted by someone with a similar situation who, yes, it's allowed, but their neighbor's yard looks like a dump in the front. But you, and but so you, it's, I understand maybe it doesn't follow the qualifications, but I'm just kind of saying generally to the board. I mean, you, you, keep, I, sorry. You, you keep going back to the mess. I'm, yes, I'm I know it's that. I know it's a mess, okay, yeah. and it's all going to go away. I mean, I've been in business for forty years, and I do know that if I left a mess there and expect the customers to come to my house, the first thing they're going to look at is the mess in my dooryard and say, "I'm not going to buy from this guy; he's a pig." So everything that you see out front there is going away. Okay, I'm fine with that. I'm not addressing the mess at this point. What I'm addressing is I'm addressing the displays. I think that's too visually impact on on there. If you were if you had a fence okay, going can on I, both can sides, can I do a semi private fence across the front? What do you mean, like just a fence that goes across the front that just covers where those would be and not go up the backside? No, I, I I'm like willing. A, you know, I still plan on going down the property line across the pine trees and then back up so the backside of my sun space space has total privacy from whatever happens behind that fence. Mm -hmm. What I'm asking is. You want me to hide all my displays behind the fence, okay? I can understand that. What I'm asking is, can that be a semi-private fence? What so it mean? visually breaks it but doesn't block it? Correct. What size are you thinking of? I, I have not thinking anything. I'm just, I'm just talking out loud, thinking out loud, trying to come up a, with a solution that everybody can agree with. If you, could, if you can see them, then it's a visual impact. I mean, if you're gonna, if you, if, 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 if you're I had to make sure, if you're gonna make sure that they're not in view, they can't be in view. They gotta be hidden. Well, it's diff How do you define? Well, how do you define view? What to th to these displays? What is it to the peak? It's huge. It's like you're going to buy a car and, and sitting in the show. No, I'm saying, what what is the elevation to the peak of the display? Oh, the elevations. Yeah. Um, the, the, the portable display that's there now is um, almost 12 feet. Okay, so to hide it, you'd have to have a 16 foot barricade fence. So when you say <laughs> visual impact, right? So what are you what are you asking for? Yeah. I mean, an eight foot fence would block the majority of it, and you might see the peak coming above it. So I just don't is that acceptable? I just don't see this as a home occupation. Mm -hmm. And the further we dig into, but we're not doing home occupation yet, though. We're just doing special exceptions. So yeah. we've got to go by just I, the special I, exceptions, I, right? I understand that. Mm -hmm. I under, I'm just I'm just telling Rick where yeah. I'm coming from. Yeah, and, it, and there may be some interconnections from special exception to home occupation, mm -hmm. right? There may be some common threads. And normally we don't open this up to you, sir, but I'm, I'm trying to work with you a little bit here. Normally to. when when we're done talking to you, we're done talking to you, so you can't address us unless you ask me specifically. But I'm trying to work with you a little bit and try to find out some more information. So we're giving you a little bit more leeway than we normally would. So just, just for your instance. So that your, your position on this is no. Yeah, the visual impact is, yeah, I think there's visual impact. There is a visual impact, so I'm no on that. Okay, thank you. I, I think one of the things that I kind of see from the positioning of where these portable displays is loca are located is that it looks like that's kind of a means of advertising them. Right, that, that first one, that the, the largest, the 12 by 14, is you know, right up as close as to Gorham Road. And um, I kind of question why you wouldn't even try to just tuck it back in towards the back of the lot a little bit and minimize the frontage. But I, so I think there's probably a purpose to you wanting to have them be seen, right? Um, I, I, I guess my, my two of my thoughts on this are is that we haven't received any neighborhood, you know, letters saying that they don't think that this is a positive or that this is this is something that they object to. Um, so that that tells me that they're not concerned. Um, 
second thing, I, you know, looking at the pictures, I think that there is probably a likelihood that this is going to improve if you do this. I do think that you would clean up the yard because I don't think you would have a chance of being successful at selling these without doing so. And I think you seem to realize that. So um, I don't have an objection on that. Um, I would be really curious to, it would have been nice to see new pictures that showed it even further ahead from where it was last month when we, when we talked to you, um, you know, to see more cleanup that might have gone on or something like that. Some um, has, but it's, it's not something that's a total visual. Yeah. Um, I mean, so the, thing, the thing too with the displays is they're on wheels. I mean, it's up to you if you want to push them back into the yard and have them more off the road a little bit so it doesn't create a visual impact. I mean, I'll let you answer that question before I take the vote on this. Um, you said they're both one's on wheels and you're going to put the other one on wheels, right? They go to shows and things with you, correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah, I would think that if you were able to set them behind the greenhouse storage and showroom towards the back of the lot, you might have a better chance of getting things through. I, I don't know. I'm new here. <laughs> um, you know, other than that, I, I see them as not much different than having a really large boat in your yard, you know, being on a trailer or something like that. And I think we have to be kind of cautious about passing too much judgment over, over the current condition of the lot. Mm -hmm. um, okay. You know, I, I, that's, those are my only concerns. Yeah, we have to look at it on the merits of what we're actually looking at is just this, almost, this occupation for special yeah. exceptions first. Yeah. So I guess I'll allow you to answer that question. Would you be willing to move them back or put up a fence? if that is something that would determine a no vote to be a yes vote potentially for you. I'm flexible. Okay. <laughs> and, and Mr. Chair, may I make a suggestion sure. to see if the applicant is willing to consider? Uh, if the fence on the right-hand side that now goes back towards the depth of the property, if it took a right turn and went towards the driveway just west of the covered deck. Thank you. Doesn't give that to everybody. <laughs> it won't, yeah, it'll only work on this one. I don't know. Wrong way. Probably pointing at myself. Button. There, there you, go. you go. If that fence were to come in this direction and come out to about right here, it would cover this display. And if you move this display back here. Exactly. And you put in, say, an eight foot fence, you'd still see the peaks. So you know they're there, but visually from the road, you'd see this fence and just see the peaks of these. Would that be acceptable to the board for would breaking up the visual density out at the front of the property? Ms. Shoup, would that change your opinion of visual impact? Are we talking visual impact? Yes, if that were to happen. Yeah, the question mm -hmm. is, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity of other structures and density of development. So really this question is around visual impact and intense, intensity of use. It's trying to give it a little bit less visual impact at the front of his property. I guess I will, I will call for the vote. Mr. Bliss, did you have any I'd, I'd be all right with that. Okay. I would be as well. Again, for me, it's just having everything so close to the road. So if the applicant is amenable to what Mr. Loisel proposed here, I would be fine with that. Okay. Yes, Mr. Chair. Ken, what is the what's, you know, what's the construction of the showroom going to be that, that's on the pad, on the slab? Is that going to be a, a sunroom construction, or is um, that going to be? I haven't actually decided how that was going to, what that was going to be, whether it was going to be sunroom materials or what I was going to do there. Um, I was leaning towards a, a post and beam construction type thing. Um, I, I guess what you're asking, if I'm willing to take the 12 by 14 display and stick it in the corner, up behind the greenhouse. Yes, and put a some type of a fence, say, well, the greenhouse is the fence. Well, wait a minute. Yeah. The fence goes to the left of the greenhouse, correct? Right, right but, here. I mean, if you drove past and saw the greenhouse, is 18 yeah. feet tall. I don't think you I need a fence. 
If he puts it behind the greenhouse, then I'll okay, put it behind the greenhouse. I think okay. the greenhouse is the fence. The greenhouse yeah, will be the how fence. How high is the greenhouse? 18 feet. 18 feet? And the greenhouse. And, and, and your showroom will be right. totally. It has to be taller than the greenhouse right. in order to water tighter. Okay, so again, 18 feet. So, okay. Is this the green? This is the greenhouse. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's going to be staying, correct? Correct. Okay. I guess I will call for a vote. I'll be all right with that. On <laughs> E. It's been a while since I've actually read it. So, yes, on E. All in favor of E being met with the stipulations that we've placed upon this that we're going to require. Would you want to ask the applicant if he would be willing to do that before we voted so you know whether he would agree to yeah. it or not? I think you said he'd be inflexible. Are you willing to put those up behind the greenhouse? Am I willing to put the 12 by 14 display behind the greenhouse so it's hidden from the view from the street? Yes. Okay. And you had another one too, so they would both be up there, right? Well, I'd like to leave that one where it is. Right now, it looks like that's partially hidden by the showroom based on its current position. Okay, so you want to leave one there, but put one up behind. Do you have, do you have a picture of the other one? Uh, is that where the blue tarp is located in no. C3? Okay. No. No. Can you bring up that picture? I probably do on my phone, but that's... Can you pull up C3, yeah. please? Uh, right I knew I should yeah, have so it's just picture. to the left of that utility pole there is where he's proposing to have right. the, the, what you see, Okay. What you see right there now is is a smaller greenhouse that will be moved up to my house. Oh, mm -hmm. that's the way. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then you're wanting to put the other display down there, which is the first thing you see from the road yeah. before you get to your bigger Correct. greenhouse. And, and would you say that approximately where the blue tarp is on the right-hand side, that's where that di second display would be? Uh, no. The 8 by 14. Is it, is it's it more to the right or more to the left of that? You, you see the telephone pole? That, that yeah. blue tarp is an RV. Okay. Um, <laughs> see the, the telephone pole? Yeah. It would be right behind the telephone pole. Okay, so it's a little more to the right than that? Correct. Okay. But and the building will come out to before the telephone pole, the showroom? Uh, no, that'd probably be the, the far, if you're looking at the building, that'd be the far right of the pole. The pole's like five feet off the edge of my driveway. Yeah. Okay. So nice. you might partially block <laughs> the second display yes. by the showroom, but not fully block it? Correct. I'd be fine with that. <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm trying to follow you here. The, the other display is going to be out. You won't be able to see the other display from the street or until you get up past the greenhouse in okay. my driveway. And the other one will be up behind the greenhouse. The big one will be behind the greenhouse, which will be totally blocked from the street. Okay. And the small one with the 8x14 would be kind of kitty corner from that telephone pole back towards the greenhouse. But okay, so half of that will probably be blocked by the, the new showroom after it's built. So if we look at the photo right here, right behind Brian That's and Leroy, yeah. Um, yeah. the smaller it's greenhouse, the 8x14 greenhouse, yeah. will be located right here. Correct. Okay. And then in front of this greenhouse here that's existing, there's a slab on the ground that would have the showroom. And the showroom coming roughly about here would... Uh, break up the image of that second smaller yeah. portable display. Correct. Is, is that clear to everyone on the board? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So you're fine with putting the other display up behind greenhouse? Don't have a choice. If it's a compromise. You're <laughs> probably right. You probably don't have a choice. Um, all in favor of E being met with the stipulation that we placed that the one greenhouse be put up, I mean the ones... Both greenhouses behind the... Both greenhouses or both, being both blocked <laughs> by the new facility and the greenhouse. Okay, it's 5 nothing. It's unanimous. Would everyone please turn off their cell phones? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. F. If located in a shoreland zone as depicted on the Town of Scarborough official shore zone map, the proposed use will comply with all the requirements of the Town of Scarborough <coughs> shoreland zoning. You're not in a shoreland zone, correct? Correct. Okay. Don't know if we need to really go down through. I think all no, in favor of this being met. Five. All in favor? Five nothing. G, the applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest to the site the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed usages you said you have. Any questions on this from 
or comments, please, findings of fact on this? Is it, is no, it? I, he's presented that he has right in title, so we agree with that as we have in the past. The tax bills. And we do have the tax bill in there as well. So that shows that. All in favor of this being met? It's five to nothing. On G. H, the applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection five of this section. I think we've put one in there, so Mr. Lazell, you can expand upon that or? No, I agree. He, uh, he discussed what he has for income as well as his wife or occupation, so I think that makes them, uh, gives them the ability to meet any financial uh, needs that they would arise if we put financial stipulations on this particular appeal. I agree with Mr. Lazell. I agree. They've clearly stated they have the financial means. Yeah, you have the financial means and you know what we're what we're requiring, so I think it's been pretty mm -hmm. straightforward. I agree. Agreed. All in favor of H being met? It's unanimous. Five zero. I, the proposed use will be compatible with the existing uses <coughs> in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operations. Again, I think this is pretty straightforward, but go ahead. Yes, you stated on record, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. is typical hours and uh, low noise because of the low density. I agree. I have nothing to add. I don't have anything to add to that. You've already expanded upon that. You said you're not going to really have a lot of traffic. You're going to have standard hours. If it hours. gets more, I'm going to move. <laughs> <laughs> Any comments? I'm in agreement. Agreed. All in favor of the last section being met? It's five something. On to... Performance standards for home-based occupation. Uh, do we need to? I think we need to have a final vote on the special exception to make sure. Is there a motion? Motion to approve the appeal number. Sorry. Uh, twenty as, six twenty twenty six thirty four. As stated with the stipulations by the board. Anybody second? I'll second. All in favor? Oh, um, yes. We want to reiterate the stipulation first. For the the conditions ought to be clearly stated so yeah. that those okay. can. Um, you want to amend which, your with the specific sure. conditions. Uh, vote to approve based on putting the based on the sketch that has been shown. The front display will go behind the new position of the greenhouse, and the second display can stay in its current location, partially hidden by the. Uh, Showroom, excuse me. Anything more you want to that? We good? Okay. There was a second. Who had seconded? Seconded. All in favor of the appeal being met? Passes five nothing. You don't really have to go back through the performance standards. I don't think, Leroy, because you you discussed those as part of all of this. Okay. And he already answered them, and those are performance standards for the. They're, the performance standards aren't the board's responsibility. That's more my responsibility when we issue the permit. Okay. Um, if you, if the board, I think what I would put out to the board members is, are you comfortable with the responses that you got to these, and have you addressed all of the issues that arose out of the mainly the displays. And what was the other one, the displays and the retail sales, I think? Yeah, I mean, I'm glad you pointed that out, Brian, because, I mean, I, I voted yes because I thought we were going to then vote on the fact that you can't have displays. Yeah. And that I don't think that this should pass. So. Okay, then maybe um, you need, need, maybe yeah. maybe you need to go back, back. to I do, I do think we need to go back <laughs> yeah. to them and have a separate yeah. vote. Right. I mean, that's great, but, I mean, we just sat here and used the word displays for the last 10 minutes, and it specifically says displays are not allowed. Um, so. So, so let's go back through the performance standards, the whole occupation. Yes. Yes. So I just need clarification. What is that vote no longer valid? I don't know. Can we reset? That's kind of. Where I, I guess was I saying. didn't. I thought we were voting thought, on the special exception, and then we'd go through the home occupation. That's what I thought too. That's what I, I thought as well. Um, so I thought you have any other thoughts on that? No, I thought that we we're going to do as well. Okay. So, so just a, um, would this just be a, a point of order? We would correct ourselves. And so the appeal has not been approved for the special exception until we go through and home occupation is approved. Get the home occupation well, approved again. Just just for clarity, the the board's.
purview, it, it's important to, to review the home occupation standards in, in Section 9. But what you're truly approving with the application, the application doesn't have those standards on it. The application has the special exception standards. You're approving the special exception. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we can't vote the, on that till we go through? The, the same way that you would review a special exception yep. adjunct use to a place of worship. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then we need to um, rescind our vote and well, go through. No, the I'm not. Well, I'm not sure that you do. Well, let me explain. I, 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 th I thought in going through those performance standards, you raised the questions that you then discussed as part of your findings of fact on the special exception. You, you, you dealt, I thought you were dealing with the display issue and I thought you were dealing with the retail sales issue. Mm -hmm. There really is no, in my mind, there's no formal um, finding of fact or conclusion of law associated with the performance standards other than you reviewed the questions with the applicant, you got his responses to that so that you could then take that knowledge and review the special exception questions. See what I'm saying? I see what you're saying, but I think the vote needs to come after the I'm I'm, I'm not disagreeing with that. I'm just okay. saying that um, I, I think it's a good idea to go back through it. It's just not a formal process like you like you just went through with the special exception thing. There's no harm in discussing them, and, and maybe out of that, you come up with additional conditions that you want to put into the special exception um, findings. Okay. Uh, but it is, I just when, want to be when we're reviewing this as a home occupation and a special exception, we need to review all the criteria and we need to be clear that yes. we're all okay with that criteria yes. for both. Yep, I agree. And there have been questions raised that we may not be okay with all the criteria yep. of this. So with that being said, I think we need to go back and could one one thought could we yes. could we do um, since uh, with the motion can we discuss the performance standards and then. Um, make a motion to add an amendment or an additional restriction onto the motion that was passed. Can we do that? Like if we if we go through and discuss the home occupation performance standards right now, um, and we say that, uh, for instance, um, you know the displays issues displays are not allowed. They need to be removed or something like that. Can we make an amendment to our motion stating that those can't be there? I think we need to take the motion off the table and go through the performance for home occupation. Okay. And make it part of that. Mr. Loisel, do you have any other? No, I think uh, I think the point about special exceptions that uh, that was made is that's really what we're voting on. I agree. But I thought we were going to go through home occupation as well, just to make sure everybody was on the same page, because I think there was a question around five, which Ms. Shoup is probably going to be discussing in depth. So that could throw out the use of E in the special exceptions for her. And I, I think if we had done it the other way around, talked about occupation first, and then voted in the special exception, then that would have come up and surfaced. But since we did it kind of backwards, I think it was, it, it appears like you're being not let in. No, so we did it based upon the guidelines, but it that's okay. comes out backwards, yes. But, but I think we can, I, again, I think we could review home occupation and then re-review what we did on special exceptions after and do a final vote. I think that's fair. I'm fine with that. Just trying to work through procedurally yep. how to, how to yep. address this. So Let's just go down through to see where we're at on these. Okay. Um, the occupation professional shall be carried on wholly within the principal building or within a building accessory thereto. So I'll start with you. Uh, again, I think we're okay. The applicant has proven that it, it fits in this RF zone in my opinion. Uh, I struggle with the building accessory. Um, I, um, is it a display or is it an accessory? Um, so now. Uh, can you come back to me, please? <laughs> okay. Um, based upon what we've been told upon this for the building within the accessory, therefore, I, I think I would side with you. Because I'm looking at the accessory as if that's the showroom and the greenhouse right. storage, right. not the two displays that he's talking about. I think that comes up in five, yeah. but I think he's planning on using that showroom as the dwelling or the 
whatever I want to call it, a special mm -hmm. exception here for this particular dwelling. I would concur with you yeah. on this. Mm -hmm. You still need more time. Well, if it's wholly within the principal building, then you wouldn't need the display. It's just to clarify for the board. Well, the principal building would be the home. Right. That's set because it's back home occupation. Yes. So in this or case, within it's a building a, accessory. So sorry. Or and that's what this is. That's what this is. Yes. Just to clarify. That's right. So the business will take place wholly within the, the greenhouse show storage room. and showroom. Yeah. Yes. No, no physical business transactions or um, signing of contractual documents would take place anywhere but the show. <laughs> okay, I'm fine with that. I thought a home occupation had to be in your house. It, 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 you lobster I mean, out of your it, home, right? It clearly it's tanks warehouse. in your garage. That's a warehouse there. Yeah, but if you look right down by Black Point Road, you've got lobster shacks that are off. Visits. We're not talking about that. We're talking about this. I'm saying that's just another example of it's not in the home structure. It's in a either accessory building or another quote unquote structure on the property. If but you do, if you repair if cars, go, if you, if you repair cars as a home occupation, you're not doing it in your dwelling. You might have a quote unquote second building on the property that you do that in. Okay, but. Isn't there some place in the home occupation that says you can only use 20 or 25 percent of the square footage of your house? And it says in the dwelling. Yeah, it's in the dwelling. That's that so percentage is so in what's the, dwelling. the dwelling. Is his house the dwelling? The dwelling? His is. house is the dwelling. This is not the dwelling. This is the accessory building. Okay, so. But isn't the home occupation a certain percentage of the dwelling? If it's in the home itself, outside of the home, I think it's that it thousand square feet. Can be any size feet. outside the home. Well, outside no. of that, it's that thousand square feet. Okay. Because it says right here on the C space within the accessory building, to totaling not more than one thousand feet. So, so that's, that's why back the, the twenty percent came up and doesn't really count. <clears throat> we, have we addressed your concerns on that? Not really. <laughs> okay. Right. Well, you certainly yeah. can vote whichever way you want. Um, <laughs> all, all in favor of one? Two. All opposed? Two. So you voted yes. Okay. So, so three yes, two no's. Who was the two no's? Karen. Me. Okay. Home occupation shall be clearly incidental and secondary to the use of the dwelling unit for residential purposes. I think this is pretty clear. The house is for residential. Yeah. This dwelling is for. I agree. Yes, I agree. I agree. Yeah. All in favor of two? It's unanimous five. <clears throat> no more than one person who is not a resident of the dwelling unit shall be employed in the home occupation. Yeah, he's proven that he's not going to have additional. Uh, people working for him, it's himself, so. Meets? Yes, he's answered our questions. Agreed. Yep, there will be no employees, so we've already addressed that. You don't have any employees when you install these? That doesn't happen that on the property. That happens on the property. That happens on the property. It could be do a they, contract. Do those people come to your house? No. Okay. I'm all right with it. All in favor of three? Unanimous five men. Exterior signage shall be permitted in accordance with the home occupation sign provisions under section 12, sign regulation subsections. Were you planning on adding a sign at the front of the property? That would be Mr. He's got Longstaff, his plan. I believe. <laughs> yeah. That would be Mr. Longstaff. So as long as you follow the guidelines that are stated, you're okay. And he gets a, per and he gets a permit. <laughs> yes. and, and you get a permit, excuse me. <laughs> yes, you do have to have a permit. You do need to see Mr. Longstaff for it. Yeah, I'm confident the town yeah. will take care of that. Good. I'm good. I trust Mr. Longstaff will get everything done. Yep. Be done. All in favor of four? It's unanimous. Five, there shall be no exterior display, no exterior storage of materials, and no other exterior indication of the home occupation or variation from the residential character of the principal building, except as expressly permitted by the district regulations of this ordinance. This prohibition shall not apply to the storage of lobster traps. Yes. 
uh, again, the way I'm looking at this is home occupations are meant to be in the home. This is in a secondary structure. The displays that he's going to use are, in my opinion, within reason, no difference than having some type of a farm stand where you're going to show your vegetables at the road. <coughs> he's trying to do that, but with these structures, they're larger than a couple of vegetables in a small stand. He's doing what we are asking, or has agreed to do what we were asking, which is to hide those structures to minimize the visual disturbance that's going to happen out at the road. He's going to do what he has to do to clean up the front of his yard because he knows it affects his sales. He's putting a fence of some type uh, to protect those things that he wants to have out of view from this display and, uh, uh, and showroom area. So I think he's doing what he has to to clean up the front of his yard. So I know it says no displays, but in this type of a home occupation, you have to have something. And I think he's trying to be reasonable with this. So. Uh, again, as a proponent of trying to have people do home occupations and businesses, as much as I don't want him to have displays, I don't think what he's asking is unreasonable. So in that case, I think he meets. How do you get around the no exterior displays with that reasoning? Just because you don't consider them to be From displays. now on, we're shutting every farm stand down. We're shutting every small uh, business down that puts anything totally out of the road. You're talking inventory. Okay. This is that, an inventory. Let's go one by one. No, I mean, I'm kind of a stickler for definitions and rules, and um, I mean, no exterior display means no exterior display. I think it's a slippery slope when we try to let appeals come through and we start saying, oh, well, let's spend an hour and a half with an appeal and say you can put a fence here and do this and do that. It's a residential neighborhood. No, it's not. It's um, a rural RF. Okay. Right. okay. That's not the same rule. Rural. Right. Yes, it's different rules. Okay. It's not a residential property. Okay. It's an RF zone. I mean... No exterior display for me means no exterior display, no exterior storage of materials, and no other exterior indication of a home occupation. You're specifically wanting to put stuff outside to show your home occupation. I think this is an exact contradiction to what number five is. So, I, you know. I'm struggling with this one as well. Um, there shall be no exterior display, but both they're on the plan. It says portable display and portable display. Um, and I understand trying to accommodate, but um, the issue I questioned, which was answered, no exterior storage of materials. Materials will be dropped off, but then they will be taken to a job site. Um, my concern with this one is uh, making sure that as materials are dropped off, they're immediately brought and they're not left for days or a week or so or something like that. Um, I'm still nebulous on my decision on this one. And this is why, Ms. Tomas, I thought we should go over this as a addendum to the special exceptions because I think this is a sticking point for a lot of people. Even though we've got concessions on the displays, part of it does say here there shall be no exterior display. I mean, I'm not having a problem with the existing storage. You've showed us there shouldn't be, a, there won't be any existing storage. You've talked to us about that. You said you're not going to be getting it there. It'll just go to the customer's location and um, there's no in, it, other in exterior indication of a home occupation. I mean, that one you could look at too, because I mean, if you've got a sign on your property, it's an indication of a home occupation. That's so, permitted. Right. No standards. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Don't, so Don't confuse those issues. No, I'm not confusing them. <laughs> and I mean, I, the biggest thing for me is, as it's been said, is no exterior displays. And I don't consider like your argument was that a farm stand is an exterior display. I think it's I don't think it's a display because it's got product. It's it's more of a shack, I guess. So I'm looking at it that way. This mm -hmm. is an actual display of something that's going to be sold. A tomato is not going to be a display. Look, of look down Gorham Road, yeah. going towards the university, and look on your right. You're going to see a guy that displays the, I don't know what you call them, the brass things you put up on the roof. Is that a display? He's got five or six out at the edge of the road. Which one are you talking about? I don't, I don't even, I don't know what you call it. But is that a home-based stock? Oh, cupola? Cupola. Yeah, thank you. Go down the road, you see them right there. Is that a display? I don't see much of it. This is a bigger display, I get you. But 
if you're going to start pointing fingers, be careful because they're all <laughs> over the place. People display at the end of their road. And I, mean, I know people do, don't like it. At the end of their a homes. lot of stuff that yeah. they're not permitted it's to do. Home. I mean, he's coming here and saying, yeah. I've been running a business out of my house since 1999, which yeah. was not permitted. And now he's, and so, you know, people do stuff every day. He's actually asking for permission, so we, we're going to follow the rules. But, oh. Did you just say he ran a business out of his property that wasn't permitted? I thought you said when you moved there in 1999 that you ran your construction business out of your house, and you still do. Right. I mean, when you're yep. running, nope. a, when you're running a modeling contractor, you don't Sir, have people coming to your house. Sir, take the mic. Just no, it's fine. He answered. He said yes. Yep. Yeah, just because he parks his construction equipment on his property <laughs> doesn't mean that he doesn't have right to do that. I mean, when you're, you're, when you're saying that he was breaking the rules, and I want to I want you to correct that on record. Right. Is I that would, him breaking the law or breaking the rules? What I want, I think what's hard is when your yard is littered like this, it's hard to know what is from your home occupation that you've been operating there from now. What's your hobby in that? So we want to say, oh, let's let you build a new, start a new business there, but you've already been running a business there, maybe not a different business, but it's already been operating there. Um, Can you please clarify your statement? I, yes. I no, have, not you. Please. I'm not, I want you to clarify your statement. How so? What would you like me to say specifically? You just said he ran a business illegally out of his home or breaking the rules. Sorry, I don't know if it's illegal, but I, my understanding under ordinances, if you have a home business, you need permission. You tell me. Yes, sir. So, so I think part of the misunderstanding is a home-based business takes place at the home. Mm -hmm. And, and as a remodeling contractor, or as a plumber, or as an electrician, or as a pipe fitter, or as a welder, you're you're, you go to a job site and you perform your occupation. You, you're, not, you're not doing it at the home. You may have equipment that you take with you to go do your job at the home. And in the RF district, you're allowed two commercial vehicles to be parked in your which could be loaders, could be dump trucks, could be whatever. Mm -hmm. So I think the confusion is that he's, yes, he's been a contractor living at this residence and going to work from this residence. He's had some, dis some sunroom displays parked there, but he hasn't advertised them. There's no signage. And, and, and that part is a little iffy and in the gray area, but I wouldn't go so far as to say it was illegal to do so it's just that he hasn't operated a home-based business. Um, I, I had already asked him to move those structures back away from the road for that, for that purpose. So there's a little bit of a gray area. If you're a plumber and you have a van with Joe's Plumbing Service on it, it and you park it every night in your driveway, are you running a home-based business? doing his books and bringing the trash back and things like that. You know, you just, it's a slippery slope. Um, well, it is, but we're not prohibiting Joe Plummer from parking his van, van at his house at night when he comes home from the job. That, we're not going there. And, and I, think that's, I think that's what Mr. Loisel is saying. We're just not, we're not going there. Is there a lot of activity on this site? We all agree, yes, there's a lot of activity on this site. I can have many, as, as many hobbies as I want to have. And if my hobby happens to be as wacky as a sawmill, <laughs> I guess I can do that. Um, if I want to fly large scale model airplanes around my yard, I guess I can do that. Nobody's prohibiting me from doing it. So I, I think we have, to, we have to go back and get away from all of that stuff and concentrate on the application that's yeah. in front of us. And keep our comments focused on the application that's in front of us and keep in mind, conditions that we want to state as part of that application, I think are, are fair game. I think it's completely fair to make it a condition that the yard get cleaned up. I think that's completely fair. But I don't think that we can start to go into other things that are not in front of us tonight just because we have Google Earth up on the sky, uh, on the screen, mm -hmm. and we see a bunch <laughs> of stuff on there. So let's, let's keep to our name and focus on the application and, and start to ask some real questions like, why couldn't those display it? You've got a big building out back of the greenhouse. 
can't you pull those trailers in that building so they're no longer displayed outside and you walk people right over there and show them you know, those displays? You can't do it? What's in the building that you got to get rid of? <laughs> <laughs> or what's going in the building? Because gotcha. it's right. not the big building you're talking about. Yeah. I'm talking about this big structure right here. Oh, okay. Did everybody miss that? Am I the only one that no, sees no, that? We... <laughs> no, we just don't have pictures of it from what's yeah. been presented. I mean, had we not? So I was just wondering why you couldn't create internal space to slide those trailers, those display units, inside somewhere. They're no longer displayed. That's my playpen. That's my main cave. That's a big well, maybe the man cave needs to move to the house. Put that in the small greenhouse. It won't go in the house. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think you had addressed that before and said that you were, that was where you would. I'm just trying to find, I'm trying to find solutions to the display problem. Okay. I guess to Mr. Longstaff's comment is basically you said that it was, I, I believe you had said that that was your wood hobby that you did out of there. And I think Mr. Longstaff's looking at it like, well, maybe you don't do your hobby and you just slide those in. The building, and then we don't have to deal with any of this because there's no displays. So, I mean, we're going to vote. If we're done with the questions and everything, but we'll go over them and just vote according to that. But do you want yeah. the applicant to answer that question? Is that what you're asking? No, for? I'm just, no. Okay. I'm just trying to guide the board back to the the standards. Yes, yeah, so we're still on the we're still density on display. Yes, we still storage. are on that, and I mean, my comments are basically that I. I a display. I mean, I see it as a, as a display, and I, I think there could be other ways to do this. So that's just my own. They're displays. I mean, let me ask you another question. There's certainly enough room to put both those displays in a greenhouse. No. Greenhouse is 16 by 24. Yeah. And this one display is 8 by 14. The two displays are 20 by 14. <coughs> They'd fit in there. You couldn't walk around them. I mean, the greenhouse is not, it, it's a slope ceiling. I mean, you've been in the greenhouse, you know it's a slope ceiling. So they, I couldn't get them in the building. If I could I get can, one in there, that's all I could get in there. I can believe that. I guess I would just ask for a yes or no on this. Because the answer is no. I gotta, I gotta hang up with the displays. I really do. All in favor of five being met. One. All opposed. Abstain. Abstain. Don't. All right. You opposed. Four I'm opposed. sorry. I didn't mean to scowl at you, but I really did. I was too. I really did. Um, no nuisance shall be generated, including but not necessarily limited to offensive noise, vibration, smoke, dust, odors, heat, or glare. The, I'll get out here and then I'll Again, I, I think this type of a business doesn't create an odor or an issue that's going to be a nuisance. No, I don't think any nuisance would yeah. be created by this. Nothing to add. I don't think any nuisance would be created either. That's why I'd asked about the sawmill. And I mean, if that's going to be done inside and it's going to be out of the way, you're not putting any more dust or odors or anything like that. So I think this is pretty straightforward on this one. Yeah, I agree. All in favor of six being met. It's unanimous. Traffic generated by such home occupation shall not increase the volume of traffic so as to create a traffic hazard or disturb the residential character of the immediate neighborhood. Yeah, we discussed this earlier, low density. Yeah, I mean, we've got the, I think you had mentioned the parking spaces. What did you say? It was like 44 feet or something like that. Yeah, that's the next one. Enough freight cars. Yeah. Any comments down at the other end of the table? Yeah. All in favor, seven be a met. Unanimous. Eight, in addition to the off-street parking provided to meet the normal requirements of the dwelling, adequate off-street parking shall be provided for the vehicles of each employee and their vehicles the maximum number of users or customers the home occupation may attract during peak operating hours. Yeah, there's more than enough parking. Yes. Yeah, it won't contribute to, uh, yes, I agree. No, that road you can't really contribute much to. About right. 5 o'clock, you Correct. can't get anywhere in that road. Anyways. There's plenty of room for parking. Yeah. All in favor of being met for 8? It's unanimous. 
Nine, the home occupation unit utilized not more than 20% of the dwelling unit floor provided that the purposes of the calculation, unfinished basement and attic spaces are not included, unfinished attic and basement spaces and spaces within an accessory building totaling not more than 1,000 square feet of floor area. Yeah, I used the 1,000 square feet because it's not in the dwelling and I showed him at 1036 with the quote unquote displays. So if those count as that square footage, it brings it over. Um, if they were displays at 280, brings the uh, the accessory unit to 756 for those that voted differently in that last one. So uh, under my position, <coughs> it met it because I didn't look at the, the displays as part of the structure. It's a lot of math, <laughs> not gonna lie. Um, I mean, I gotta say, Mr. Loisella, he's got the numbers sitting right out here and when you put in the displays, it's over a thousand, so I'm gonna have to go. I, I struggle with this one. Um, even though it says portable display, the display is still going to be there for long periods of time. Um, it's, so it is, in my mind, semi-permanent, even though it may be moved or transported elsewhere. Um, and it being a, from that perspective, looking at 1,036 square feet, uh, which exceeds 1,000 square feet of floor area. So I don't agree. Um, I would agree that this is met uh, based on the fact that the displays on wheels, they can be taken to fairs, they can be taken anywhere, so they're not part of the structure. Um, it's 756 square feet, that's what we're looking at. We're not looking at the additional for the displays because they're not permanent, they're not on a slab, they're not attached. So it's, it's under the 1,000 square feet. Yeah, if you don't count the displays, he's all right. Can, All live, can you live without the displays? Okay. So I had a few comments that I missed the rat last time going around too, but you know, what's, um, it, it, are two displays really necessary for your business? Could when, you possibly have turned that the, the showroom into, used one of those displays as the showroom? We're not really yeah. asking questions any further here. Okay. We're just doing a yes or no at this point. Okay. I mean, that's, that was just one of my questions, my concerns, was if there was any, any other way to try to make that all work. Yeah, we've asked all the questions of the applicants, so we just need to be yes or no. All in favor of nine being met? Three opposed? Two? Ten home occupations may include retail sales subject to the following limitations. The total area devoted to retail sales is limited to 400 square feet and must be fully enclosed within a building. The sale of products is limited to products or articles produced, assembled, or processed on the premises, and seafood caught or harvested off the premises by persons who reside in the dwelling unit or by one employee permitted under paragraph three. Mr. Lazell. Yeah, it's under 400 feet because the showroom is, I think, 252 square feet. Um, no, because there's I mean, the products and articles produced are not going to be assembled or processed on the premises. Uh, can you come back to me, please? You got to learn to make decisions here. I know, I know. <clears throat> um, on this, did we have, I thought we had two separate numbers for the um, actual office and the showroom, am I correct on that? Yeah, no, uh, the, the building, if it's an accessory building, can be a thousand square feet, no more. Right. 400 square feet of that can be retail sales space. So imagine somebody who's creating furniture, uh, fine furniture. You've got their wood shop and they've got their sales area, but it's all under the same. same okay, room. and we were under that when we did our calculations. Oh yeah, right? you're under that. I think, I think Ms. Shoup's question is a valid one, and I wrestle with that myself. But we, we had one similar um, applicant in the past year that was going to do knockdown cabinetry, assembly <coughs> cabinetry. It could be assembled at the site, at the home occupation, or it could be assembled at the job site. And I think, I think the board kind of gave enough latitude to that one because it could be done either there or somewhere else. We've had people who assembled um, uh, floral arrangements and then delivered them somewhere else. This is 
one that, you know, the sale is actually just an agreement. There's, there's no product changing hands at the site. So it's a little trickier. The product is actually, it's definitely not assembled at the site. It's definitely assembled off site. Mm -hmm. this, I, I, I struggle with how you can do, you know, how you can do that. It seems like it should be a fit, but if you read that definition, it's tough to, yeah. to square it up. I would agree with you on this. I mean, we've, we've looked at the square footage, which it's under, but it does say, and I know we've, we've had a little latitude in the past on things for processed on, I mean assembled, or processed on the premises, and maybe we shouldn't have, but this is co pretty clear that it's processed on the premises and it's not. So I would probably be a no on this one. I mean, he meets the 400 square foot limit on the showroom. So for my answer, um, yes, I agree that the total area devoted to retail sales is under 400 square feet because all the deals, the contractual sidings, and agreements take place inside the small area, which showroom, which is under 400 feet, it's 252 square feet. Um, the sale of products is limited to products and articles produced, assembled, or processed on the premises. Now, one way that I can that you can um, interpret this as that material is being brought to this location. He's processing it by putting it onto his, uh, his trucks, his trailers, whatever he has, and then transports that to the job site to then assemble it there. But the receiving of raw material, I would, I would argue as being processed on the premises. The only concern I have with that, as I mentioned earlier, is that I, I, the exterior, storage of material that, you know, as material comes in, it should be... He was going to put that in the greenhouse. Gotcha. Sorry. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. So, yes. Receiving of the materials, the raw materials, I would consider and interpret as being processed on premises. And to add to your description, if the sale occurs at that building and it's direct shipped to an owner, I consider that being processed in that building. So that's why I'm saying the showroom is where it got processed. It got direct shipped to the owner and he assembled it on their site. It got processed in the showroom, not anyplace else. That's why it's 252. So if you have an internet sales business, you never received the product in your hand and it goes directly to a home, but you sold it in that property, that is processed. So even though it's not assembled, it's not fabricated, it's not touched on site, doesn't mean it wasn't processed. So I agree with you. It's a good argument. All in favor of 10 being met? Four. Opposed? One. Uh, you're not a fisherman or a lobsterman or shellfish harvester, so I don't think we really need to go into that too much. Um, all in favor of 11 being met? Not applicable. 5 oh. Motor vehicle repairs or motor vehicle towing businesses. Again, we're not doing repairs. And They're things. not allowed. <laughs> They're not allowed in that sense. So. All in favor of 12. Five. Now I'd like a final vote for appeal number 2364, or mo actually a motion based upon the special exception criteria that we went over and the performance standards for the home-based occupation. If anybody has any further questions, we can certainly go over questions, but if there's a motion to approve or deny. I will restate the motion that I gave before. Uh, with the stipulation that the board has asked the applicant to take the front portable display and put it behind the greenhouse storage area and leave the rear portable display in the location that was shown on the drawing. Is there a second on the motion? I'll second for discussion. Okay, second for discussion. Board members, questions, comments? Have we in the past been very, very strict on displays? I don't think it's come up like this before. 
Well, I think it's also important to look at the future as well, because, I mean, they make these decisions, and yes, he lives way out on this road and in the rural district, but, um, you know, this decision can become applicable to anyone who comes before the board. And I think most other displays in the past, if they've been called displays, I don't really think they've been called displays, have either one, not been in a home-based occupation, or two, been something that's not an actual product like this. This is, this is a pretty substantial size product as a display. Probably the biggest I think I've seen since I've been on the board, which is called a display, and it's, it's everywhere. I mean, we can't right. get around the display question. It's on the documents we were presented. It's, in the, it's, it's everywhere. I mean, yeah. it all revolves around display. Yeah, I think the whole thing around home occupation is whether it fits in the, the zone that you're putting it in, right? If he wanted to put this in a residential zone in the center of Scarborough, would it fit? Not even close. This is an RF zone. The lots are much bigger than a residential zone. So I think that's part of our opinion, to just say, well, home base occupation, not have a display, right, is... If I wanted to have hot air balloons at my house in Scarborough on my one-third acre, clearly it doesn't fit if I want to blow up a hot air balloon on my property. But if I lived on a 10-acre lot and I want to sell a hot air balloon and I want to blow one up on my property, it kind of fits because it's wide open and I'm on a big lot. So I think it's whether it fits or not. So I understand what everybody's saying. My opinion, again, it's got to fit in the right area. And if this were a different RF, which had different density, maybe that would be a different decision as well. But in this particular application, we know what the property looked like 10 years ago. We know what it looks like today. Does it fit? And I'm just one vote. So that's what you have to decide. And I mean, back to Mr. Does it fit in this particular zone, in this particular application? Back to Mr. Lazell's comments, if you look at the RF farming district and you look under special exceptions, which we're considering as this home occupation, I think this is what he's exploring. One of the items that is actually available to be put there is a home-based occupation. So it technically does fit. That's why we have to go back to the special, criteria, special exceptions criteria. That's why we went over the home-based occupation site criteria and we're kind of circling it all around at this point by going back to what does fit in the RF zone, and it does state right there, special exceptions under C is a home base occupation. So that's how this kind of all comes back around on itself when we're looking at the special exception and then going to the home base occupation and then going to the RF zone, it's listed. So it does fit whether or not we like it or what do you think we the display is display is too not? big or those are legitimate arguments we're looking at this as a display and we're stuck on the display thing you can circle it all around it does fit like mr lois is saying but mr yes. chair if i <clears throat> i wonder if the trailers are they, they're obviously registered correct yeah and they're registered at how as a trailer probably not a would it be considered a commercial vehicle? Mm -hmm. Do you want me to open this up for, public I'm, I'm just, for his comments so you can take I'm just, the I'm just throwing it out there because two commercial vehicles are allowed. On I was picking up on that <laughs> earlier, too. On that, that was one of the things I caught. I'm just, I, I think, that, and again, it's kind of getting back to semantics. Everything we have says display. I mean, it's, where's the document? If it was a if it was a commercial vehicle, as you're saying, maybe it's not considered a display. But I mean, isn't it written right? Portable display. Oh, no, it's clearly clearly labeled display. I mean, if it was if you had listed those as mobile carts, I don't know. Maybe it's not a display, like Mr. Longstaff is saying. But it's pretty clear. I mean, we're looking right at it. There's two that say portable display on. That's, that's the tough part for the board. We get to look at it and we have to do the straight face test and say, we've done all these things. We've looked at special exceptions. We've looked at the home-based occupation. We've gone back to the RF zone. Yeah, it fits in there and everything's there, but we're also looking at something that clearly states that it's not allowed. 
So I guess, do we have a second on that motion? We're still on discussion? I, sec I second it, James yeah, we're still on second. Okay. Yeah. So I, from, my, from my standpoint, I see it uh, looking at the writing inside of the ordinance, unless the portable display is moved permanently inside of the greenhouse storage or a portion of it is chopped and put inside the showroom, it can't be outside and it doesn't meet, doesn't meet criteria. It says display. Can't get around that. It's in ink on paper, and that's and where it's I stand in the on. presentation as well. So yes, so that's where I stand on it. Any comments at this end of the table? Um, <clears throat> I'm still kicking around what Rick was saying about uh, home occupations and in a larger area. I think what we're doing is we're asking him, we're asking him in the special exception to move the displays. And what we're doing is we're, we're not trying to hide them, but we're trying to put them out of harm's way, shall we say. Um, you can still use them. Is it against the ordinance? Yeah, it's against the ordinance. But the ordinance is, I mean, we're here to temper the ordinance if we have to. Yeah, and I also think it's important, though, to think of, you know, the future neighbors. I mean, yes, his neighbor is his friend, and he's okay with it, but, you know, that might not be his neighbor in five years, and the new neighbor might not be okay with the fact that the board said, oh, put your big displays there, and now that's another issue. We can't, we can't we can't handle the future. No, it's just something that you keep in mind if that was actually you. Well, but yeah, the, question, have, the question the question from Ms. Shoot would, would would it would it uphold to a legal challenge in the future if another neighbor came in? Did our decision hold water? And was it well thought out, right? And, and well explained. So if it got fought in court by another neighbor in the future, is it legally binding? So I think that's a legitimate question. Mm -hmm. Is the wording that says no displays, and as soon as a document has display on it, is it now going to be legally binding in the future? I would make one additional comment as well, just in regard to the overall application. Um, and Brian, please correct me if I'm wrong on this. Uh, if this application were denied, you would not be allowed to come back for one year with this exact same plan layout. If the site were to change, uh, if the displays were to be removed from this application, would that, would that um, be interpreted as a new application? That would be a decision to be made by the board. That's under the board's purview to decide yeah. if that's a significant enough change to rehear the application. I would rather see, correct me if I'm wrong, but as I'm looking at everything that you've done tonight, the one hang up that got a negative vote was the displays. So if the displays can get resolved as a condition of your uh, motion, then you could actually deal with this tonight and it, coming back would be no, but I, I mean, we, we spoke to the applicant. He said this is what he wants to do. This is how he's presented his application. Yeah. We've done the, I think we need to vote. I mean, I think yeah, and I'm I, not saying that you don't. I'm just right. saying I think you, he, you he have two choices. He's not going to change He his could mind. give it consideration and come back at a later time right. for you to consider. And you can say, no, it's not different. We're not going to hear it. Or, yes, right. it seems like it's different enough. We will hear it. But I think it is the <laughs> obligation of the board, if we see a way around it, so that we can come to a compromise <clears throat> with an applicant, it's our obligation from the city to do our best to point that out to them and if for example we wanted to see if the applicant would remove the displays altogether from the property whether it would kill the project or not and he agreed to not put the displays and that would make it pass that would be his choice knowing that he could move forward right we would give I, him a path forward to be honest with you i think there are other options that can be done but i don't want to resolve this applicant's issues for him. I think right. from a display, display standpoint, the display is, look, I'll help you out. The display is there 
to show your, your potential clients how they're constructed and give them a feel for what it's going to be like. Do you need a full-scale display to be able to do that? I think it's debatable. You could split one in half and have you walk in a half of a piece of two different sizes or there are other options. I don't, it's not, there are things that can be done and you could put them in the greenhouse and then it's not a quote-unquote display. But again, that, that's your choice and I think you might have some decisions because it looks like the board is leaning towards displays are an issue and the way it's been presented it doesn't look like it's going to pass so the question for me for the board before the vote is taken is there anything that can be decided between the board and the applicant that would allow it to move forward that the board would still be pleased to have the application approved and and normally this would be the point where we would table something we've already tabled this once we generally never try to table something twice so we want to try to get it resolved we've given you a lot of extra leeway that we don't normally give going back and forth with questions for you trying to find a way to resolve this and we've really done some thorough thought process in this and I think everybody's contributed a lot to it. Um, I can certainly open it up to you for more comments. You can speak to board's questions and I, I do believe that the display issue is going to be an issue. I, I, I'm thinking that it may be an issue of passage for you and Mr. Lazell had some great ideas. I don't know if that looks like something you would want to do if you want, I mean, you go into Walmart, you go into Sam's or whatever, they're selling tents, but they have a four foot tent up on the shelf. They don't have the full tent displayed out front. So, I mean, you can certainly address his comments and address ours and see what you think. I think with the displays, it's going to be hard for this to pass. But go ahead and give us your ideas or comments. When you go out to buy a car, you don't sit in the showroom looking like, oh, here's a door, here's a... It's here's not a home a occupation, sir. That's what we're getting at. What, what I'm trying to say is the product that I sell, the average product price installed in your house is $30,000. It's been proven by the company, Sunspace, that mock-ups don't work. People need to sit in it, to feel it, to actually see what it's going to look like in real life. They, they can't look at a piece of it and envision it. 90%, well, I'll give it credit, 75% of the people out there that are my customers cannot visualize. They have to see it, they have to feel it. So displays go, the whole thing goes. So I come back to the idea of, could you make the showroom one of these sun space rooms? I have four different models. Could I use one of the models? Yes. Is it the model that I would, that I would use for the showroom? No, because the model that sells the best is a three season room, not a four season room. Okay. So if I was going to build a showroom, I'd have to build a four season room, but that's even more money. That's an average of forty to fifty thousand dollars per sale. That's your average customer that's out of the reach. And the one that sells the most is the thirty thousand dollar one. And there's, I'm not going to go into features, but there's so many features on it that that's the most popular one. I'm trying to help you out here because you kind of just contradicted yourself. You kind of said that you need the displays to sell them because it's been proven that people can visualize themselves Correct. in it, but you have four different units and you're not using two of them. Correct. Okay. Oh, actually, actually, right. The displays I have show the options. For, uh, one of the displays shows the options for all four. That's the 8 by 14 Okay. The bulk of that display is, in order to quote numbers, try to make life easier to explain it, we have a 100, 200, 300, 400. In the, the 100 is just screens. The 200 has a vinyl window, and that's the majority of that display, which is the one that sells the best. The 300 is a glass sliding window, so I have one panel that is, shows the glass sliding. And the 400 is insulated glass sliding, which I have one panel of that so they can still get the feel of the other rooms and see the difference between it. Which are the two that you have now? The, I have the, the 200 is the 8x14 with the other two samples in it, and the other display I have has a, it shows a different roof system on it. Could you make your showroom the four season and then put a wall for each of the other three models in a section of the roof of the other models. It's, it's so not big enough. It, it, the room's not big enough. I got 
256 square feet to, to do it in. I mean, that's basically, you know, a, a bedroom. I mean, your bedroom's probably bigger than that. I mean, that's 14 by 18 space. I mean, how can you put a table in there to have a conference with people, have rail displays, fence displays, 200, 400, 300 displays, as well as all the colors and different things that go with it? It's just not enough space. I'm just saying it's all in the size of the piece, right? You're thinking you need to show them the big piece. I'm saying you're trying to show them the design, and the design doesn't necessarily have to be a big piece. They have, they have to see the full thing or visualize it on their house. I can show them pieces and parts. I go to their home, and I have pieces and parts to take with me, but until they actually sit, stand in the thing or sit in the thing, they can't visualize. So one before, so it, it doesn't seem like any progress is going to be made, being made in this direction. So uh, honestly, the options are um, we can make an amendment to the uh, make an amendment to the motion stating that uh, the appeal is allowed. However, no portable displays can be, the two portable displays have to go, and either the showroom gets built as one or the greenhouse storage, greenhouse storage encapsulates one, but that's a, that's a problem for us, a challenge that would be decided by the applicant. What we can do now is that we can approve this without the displays as a, um, as a, uh, um, um, Contingent. A contingent, yes. Yeah. I, I agree. That's not the application. He's saying he's not changing his application. I, I understand. And I, no, I'm, it, it doesn't I'm matter saying, if he changes the motion the that I made, or not. The motion that I made was to move the displays backwards. Mm -hmm. And the board is indicating that will not pass. So we could vote that up and down knowing that it's not going to pass. Or you can amend that motion to something that may pass or may not pass. Can, I'm sorry, can we amend this even though he's saying he doesn't want, he won't do it? We can, we, we can, can put whatever conditions we want yeah. on it. Right, it's his, it's his, we can approve it without the displays. It's his choice whether or not he can run with whether it. Does or that or. provide an extra burden though on the town that now suddenly they're suddenly kind of regulating this business that is, we've cut off half this business by saying no displays. I mean, that, no displays. That's the choice of the board. Okay. That, that's something that if we made that decision, the town would have to enforce. I, I think we've changed his application a lot, and I think, you know, we've just discussed it. I think he, he's made his point. He wants to submit his application with, with the displays, and he's further explained why he needs the displays, and I think we need to vote on the application as with this contingency that we're considering. We, we pretty much exhausted this yeah. as much as we can. I mean, we can change it and we can look at that. If that's not something that's going to work for you, it's probably not something that I want to put the town in the burden of going and enforcing. If, if we put those no displays on there, if that's not going to work for your business, then it's that the shoot's right. It doesn't make any so, sense to right. do it. Let me ask you a question. I've got these two portable displays that I take to shows. What am I supposed to do with them? Well, there's been all kinds of options. One was the storage no, what facility. I, what I'm saying is... No, I mean, you might have to re find a spot to rent to put them on. Oh. No, I'm just... I, that, that can happen. Mm -hmm. I, sir, we're really trying to work with you here. I mean, I if, if there's no way around the displays, I don't think it's going to happen. I think at this point, we just have to vote. So, yeah. call the question. We've had a motion. We've had a second. All those... Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like my <laughs> seat? I can give it up to you if you want. No. Okay. Please. Sorry. You got seven months before that happens. <laughs> so the motion on the table was to move the front display behind the greenhouse and leave the second display in position that is partially blocked by the showroom. Correct. All those in favor of approving appeal number 2634 with the information from performance standards and as presented as also for home occupations that's been reviewed by the board. Favor? One. Opposed? Four. Doesn't pass. I'm sorry, sir. Any more comments for us this evening, Mr. Hartsell? Uh, I do not have any board comments. Uh, 
we still now have a, a vacancy for another alternate. So if anybody knows anyone that's interested in getting involved in the zoning board, they should put uh, an application into the town. Certainly, certainly be excited to have that uh, position filled. Yes, we'd love to have one more member and have a table filled. That would be great. Any other comments? Anyone? Move to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. I'm willing to give up the chair.